What's going on everybody? K2 here with PPL Division 1 Season 6. This is our week one game. We are going up against the Accrington Stantler, coached by Ellie. And we have played Ellie a few times in the past, not just in PPL, but over uh, a couple other leagues as well. And I don't have the best track record against her. I'm looking to change that. And we're going to see how I plan to change that this game. If you guys want to know exactly what I brought, make sure to check the description down below. There will be a pokey paste. I'm not doing any team analyses this season. Uh, I, I apologize for that if you guys were looking forward to that. However, it's just, it's not worth my time to actually do that because I can show you exactly what I brought down below and you guys can figure out how it worked out in the game or not. And from there, like, if I have to explain something, I'll explain it in the game whatever but I can give you a brief overview of uh, the things that I brought I don't want to go super in-depth on every team in that or every team that I bring just because I don't feel like I need to I feel like you guys are smart enough to figure out why I brought some things uh, so let's just go ahead and talk about a brief overview of the team that I brought first off I'm bringing a choice banded Zygarde with thousand errors EQ uh, Super Power and Extreme Speed. Now, Double Ground Stab is because Skarm is the only flying thing on her team, and once that's gone, I can hit it, hit the rest of her team even harder with Earthquake. Um, Super Power is there for things like Not Scarf Bamo and the uh, Pangoro, uh, because I really want to just destroy those things. And also a potential defensive Tauros, which I thought was going to be a good idea against a Choice Banded Zygarde. And then Extreme Speed is there to hit the Mega Sceptile, which she didn't bring. And that's like the one thing that she could have switched into Zygarde, uh, which would have forced me out. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much Zygarde. It does Zygarde things. It's Choice Banded. It's super strong. Adamant. You got it. Next up, I needed a something for Pangoro because it's a really strong Pokemon, and Zapdos does exactly that. Choice Banded, uh, Stone Edge does. Uh, 75% but I can roost off the damage and I have leftovers stuff like that if it's knocked off it can't do a KO me I have air cutter in order to make sure I can do a KO the Pangoro it's just an overall good check to it I have U-turn in order to get out against certain things Zapdos if Pangoro is gone and I can save Zapdos I can use it for Skarmory uh, if it becomes an annoyance to the team I have U-turn so I can get out against Mamoswine and air cutter was good against uh, the Mega Sceptile as well Zapdos is like a secondary check to Mega Sceptile, things like that. So next up we have our Leftovers Bronzong, uh, physically defensive for Mamoswine, just 100% physically defensive, I didn't want to have to deal with Mamoswine really at all. So we got Leftovers Protect, we have Stealth Rock, we have Gyro Ball, and we have Earthquake. Earthquake was there to hit the Victini and the Raikou, and if Skarmory comes in against the Bronzong, then I, like, I have Zygarde, I have Zapdos, I have... Infernape, I have Gyarados. I have things to take advantage of Skarmory, and that's basically what the team hinged on. So, like, protecting Bronzong? Good idea, this game. So, we're going to protect Bronzong by using Protect on Bronzong to keep it healthy by getting an extra turn of leftovers every once in a while. Um, and it also is good for a potential uh, Victini that's Scarf or Bandit or something like that, because I can see what move it decides to lock itself into. So uh, yeah, that's Bronzong, just very important to not lose to Mamoswine. Next up we have a Sword Stance Chocoberry Infernape with Mach Punch, EQ, and Flare Blitz. Now Mach Punch is there because the faster things, uh, of course, you need to hit with priority and the slower things, I'll still be able to Oko with Mach Punch at plus two or just Flare Blitz or EQ like the Victini. And Infernape just really, really good against the entirety of Ellie's team. So that's another thing that's really good. Another thing that's really good against her team is this Gyarados that I brought, which is Dragon Dance Taunt with the Waterium Z, Waterfall, and Naked Bounce. And now, Naked Bounce because I needed to be able to hit the Mega Sceptile, which could have been annoying uh, to the Gyarados, and because I want to hit just other things as well. But Water is just a really good stab against our entire team. Um, and lastly, we have a max special defense, uh, max HP, careful, Mega Tyranitar, because I didn't want to lose to Victini, or just not be annoyed 
by Victini because it can be annoying to the team. So uh, with this Tyranitar I can live a Z Focus Blast from Max Special Attack Victini and I can KO it in return just because Tyranitar is super strong. I have Dual Stab, EQ, and Super Power. Super Power of course, same reason I have it on here as on Zygarde. Uh, dual Stab really good, EQ really good against our team. Just Mega Tyranitar looking to put in work against our team just because it's super bulky and it can do a lot of damage uh, while taking those hits. So that's going to be enough about that uh, that team. Let's talk about lead matchup really quick. Uh, I saw that she had a Mammoth Swan on her team, and I before the match I was thinking, okay, Zygarde 100% lead unless there's a Mammoth Swan there, in which case I'll lead Gyarados. But I completely went against that and went Zygarde anyway. Because I kind of looked at her team and I didn't think that she would want to lead Mamoswine because it is pretty important to her team uh, because of how um, how weak my team on the surface looks to Mamoswine. So that's, uh, like, I, I just felt like being a man is all. I just decided, look, if she does lead Mamoswine, I still have the Bronzong. I'll be fine. Uh, and luckily, as we're going to see, she didn't end up leading with the Mamoswine. So we're going to lead off with our Zygarde. It has super power to nail uh, the Pangoro or the Mamoswine. Uh, Thousand Arrows is just a free kill pretty much against her team. Unless uh, Victini is like Shookaberry. But if it's Shookaberry, then it's not Z-Move. And then it's just a good time. So turn one, we have our Zygarde in here. And this is a, this is a Pangoro. And uh, in three seconds, it's not going to be a Pangoro anymore. Because it's dead. And that's a great way to start off a season, ain't it? So we're already starting out after turn one up six five, and that's pretty much putting a statement on this season. I'm I'm not here to mess around. Th this is a this is the team we got. I'm happy with it, and I've never been more happy with the team, ever. So yeah, that's a turn one kill. Great. In comes the Mammoth Swine to try and revenge. I see that I switch up first. I know I'm banded. I know she's not scarf now. Uh, so in comes the Bronzong, and she makes a good prediction. Uh, they're going into Ver her Victini knowing that Bronzong was my only thing to deal with the um, the Mammal Swine. And right here, uh, I protected to see what move she wanted to potentially lock into. Now, of course, in my mind, I'm thinking there's no way that she is choiced, but it was good to at least waste a PP, <laughs> which Searing Shot only has eight, so being able to wear it out. Uh, is a good thing. Now I decided what I decided to do here was go into Zygarde because I knew I could live a Glaciate plus a Blue Flare and there's no way that she's going to Glaciate right now because I feel like she fears me getting up rocks at least at this point in the game. So my best play here was to go into the Zygarde because I felt that if she was going to make a prediction it was going to be uh, the Bolt Strike onto Gyarados, or the Focus Blast onto Titar, rather than uh, a Glaciate onto Thing, uh, Zygarde. So I felt that it was my best play. I could live a Searing Shot plus a Glaciate, and I could threaten it out with a, uh, with a Glaciate, or not, <laughs> with a Thousand Arrows, of course. Uh, so what I'm going to do is make the switch into Zygarde, as I uh, said, and we are going to actually nail that prediction as well. Searing Shot's going to come our way, and we're going to chew it, and we are just going to click our Thousand Arrows. And uh, Thousand Arrows pretty much picks up a kill every time I come in, uh, especially because Skarmory is not a switch-in, uh, because it gets KO'd. It gets to a KO'd after getting smacked down and uh, hit super effective the next turn. And that's exactly what's going to happen. In comes the Skarmory, and... There goes the Skarmory, pretty much. Banded Zygarde is a monster, and it shouldn't be messed with. So that's going to be uh, us up 6-4 to four at this point, I believe. Um, yes, that will be 6-4 to four with Zygarde picking up the first two kills in a few turns. And, look, all I can say is Zygarde is a monster. That's all I'm going to say, all I'm going to keep saying. So in comes her Tauros at this point. I know that I can live a Life Orb Ice Beam. Uh, or Life Orb Blizzard even, uh, from, well, not Life Orb Blizzard, but like, if it was a defensive Tauros, I could live a regular Blizzard. Um, so, in comes the Ice Beam, and it does just over half, 
uh, from where I was and I got off massive damage which is great because it puts it in range of extreme speed for later on if I wanted to go ahead and uh, try and set Zygarde up for an extreme speed sweep. So right here she makes a prediction that I will go into the Bronzong as I do and I'm going to protect here just to see what she wants to do. So la uh, last time I decided look I'm going to protect and switch out which I think conditioned her to think that I would do the same thing here as she's going to Searing Shot and then Focus Blast and I decided look I'm just going to make a play here and I'm going to take this time to get out my Stealth Rock which Pretty much kills the Tauros, I believe, because it was in range. And it's good for the Victini. It's good for wearing down Raikou. Uh, Mammoth Swine putting it in range of E Speed and Mach Punch uh, from Infernape. Uh, so I'm gonna gonna stay in here with Bronzong, uh, wear out some more Searing Shots. Uh, if I do that, then Zapdos will be able to wall this Victini 100% of the time. So I'm gonna wear out another PP from Searing Shot before I end up going down. However, I still live because Bronzong is a monster. And I am going to go ahead and get off this burned Earthquake and reveal that she was Shookaberry the entire time. So with that information, I know, I know that she is not Z-Move, which means Tyranitar beats this Victini 100% of the time. Because I can live two Focus Blasts um, with max special defense. Uh, Tyranitar. It's great. It's a great Pokemon. So she's gonna go for Psychic, revealing her final, or potential final move, because she could either have Thunderbolt or Glaciate, which is great for Gyarados or Zygarde, either one. Um, so that alerts me that uh, Infernape could also do something against the Victini. However, uh, as I said, I am just gonna go in with my Tyranitar. No need to mess around with anything. I can just click Pursuit two times, kill the Victini, and we can move on with our lives. Um, but as you're going to see, we are going to uh, survive with a little bit of luck here without having to take any damage because she's going to stay in here, click Focus Blast, miss the first time, and she's also going to miss the second one. Uh, which is very fortunate for us because it leaves uh, Tyranitar in here at full health, which means it can take on uh, a couple other mons on her team because she doesn't have anything that 100% knocks out this uh, this Tyranitar right away. So uh, she is going to go into her Mana Swine here, which could have threatened me out with Earthquake if I had taken the Focus Blast damage, but because I didn't, she's just going to go for Icicle Spear. Uh, she brought Icicle Spear, I'm assuming, in case I was Yachi on uh, Zygarde, which is cool, um, but She's going to get, I believe, four hits. Yes, four hits, and I'm just going to go for the superpower, which is going to be enough to knock out this Mammal Swine. So that's two kills for Mega Tyranitar. Mega Tyranitar is a monster. <laughs> Everything's up. Everything on my team I'm calling a monster. Um, so Mega Titar is in here, and I just decided, look, Raikou can't kill me either from here. I'm just going to go for EQ, and uh, we're going to see uh, where we go from there. So she's going to Volt Switch out, I'm just going to click the EQ, um, and from that damage, I believe that she's either, look, uh, I'll be honest, I didn't calc that damage, I didn't tell, I wasn't able to tell if it was a Specs Raikou, which it ended up being, uh, so Mega Tyranitar in the sand, max special defense, taking that Volt Switch, like, just shrugging it off, you know? So in comes the Raikou again, it is definitely in range. Uh, to die to E Speed plus Mach Punch if things call for it. But uh, she's going to go for Thunderbolt. I chew it, does like 50 uh, damage. And we are going to EQ. And I'm just going to make the Manly play because I know that the only thing that she can use to knock out this uh, Tyranitar at this point is going to be her uh, Thunderbolt. And in case she was choice, like I thought she might have been Scarf to outspeed a plus one Gyarados. Uh, we're just going to go into the Zygarde and uh, knock out the Raikou with the uh, Extreme Speed. So that's going to be our Week 1 game against Ellie. 5-0 victory! So we are looking good to start out this season. And man, I am so pumped that the team ended up working out uh, so well. So that's basically... Uh, that's basically it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like down below and continue watching and supporting the Harlem Gloomcrowders in our final season of Draft League.
Yes, this is going to be my last season ever. I'm just putting that out there. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.